I tested the best YouTube cameras and I realized the right YouTube camera depends on your channel. Maybe you're vlogging, making educational content, or doing something a little more cinematic. For that, you need to make sure you have the right specs and features inside your camera. So in this video, we're going to break down the best YouTube cameras out there and figure out which camera is right for your content. The Canon R7 is without a doubt one of the best YouTube cameras that you can get today because it does everything a YouTuber needs and cuts very few corners. It has a 32 megapixel APS-C size sensor which gives you gorgeous 4K video in 10 bit color at 24 and 30 frames per second and 4K at 60 frames per second for slow motion without a reduction in quality or a crop on your sensor. Also, if you want to pick up the Canon R7, I'll leave the links in the description down below for the best pricing along with the other cameras we talk about today. What makes the R7 special is that it's not just regular 4K video. At 24 and 30 frames per second, it's actually oversampled from 7K, which means you get the quality of 7K, but in a 4K video. And it also has C-Log for advanced color grading. But the Canon colors right in camera are really great. They especially make people's faces and skin tones look really good. And I really love the slow motion options in the Canon R7. It of course does 4K at 60, but it also does full HD at 60 frames per second all the way up to 120 frames per second in 10 bit color. Also, don't forget about your YouTube thumbnails. The Canon R7 shoots high resolution photos at 15 frames per second in mechanical shutter mode and 30 frames per second in electronic shutter mode. This is really useful for capturing thumbnails where there's a lot of movement and action. And the 33 megapixel sensor along with the 14 bit raw option gives you a lot of flexibility when you're editing your thumbnails. Trust me, thumbnails really matter. Plus, the autofocus in the R7 is ultra reliable with the subject detect for both people, animals, and vehicles. In terms of the body and design, it's a very standard mirrorless camera. Canon is known for making easy to use cameras. The button layout and menu in R7 is very simple, but it also has dual SD card slots and it has in-body stabilization for smooth handheld. And of course, it has a flip out screen so you can see yourself. However, I do recommend using a monitor instead if you really want to be serious about your YouTube. However, I have two small complaints with the R7. One, the lenses from Canon at this moment in time are pretty limited and the kit lens that the R7 comes with is kind of just meh. But I have a fix. You can actually use a speed booster that converts your APS-C sensor into a full frame sensor using a reverse magnifying glass so you actually get the look of full frame on a budget. And it also gives you access to Canon EF lenses, which are much more affordable, but there's also a wider variety of lenses because there's also third party manufacturers that make EF lenses and the autofocus still works perfectly fine because this is actually officially supported by Canon. The Canon R7 is 1000% a great camera for YouTubers, content creators, and even if you wanna do a little bit of photos because it covers the three things you wanna look for in your camera. Great design, high resolution video, and high resolution photos. It pretty much shoots anything and everything. But as much as I love the Canon R7, there is a camera at the exact same price that's even better for video that's later in this list. So make sure to stick around for that. Also, if you're someone who wants a casual vlogging and sit down camera to make videos like this, you wanna make sure to keep things simple and easy. For you guys, I have the Nikon Z30. The Z30 has a 20 megapixel APS-C sensor, which might look like low resolution at first, but the low resolution is actually a hidden advantage. The lower megapixel resolution actually allows it to be better in low light and it's also much cheaper because of that sensor. And I promise you, you really won't lose much in terms of detail because the way the sensor is made by Nikon, it's actually just about as sharp as a 24 megapixel sensor, so you're really not losing too much resolution. In terms of video, it shoots 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second in 8-bit color. However, this footage isn't upsampled, so it's just native 4K, and you won't get as much flexibility in your colors as the R7 because it's 8-bit footage. But that's good enough for vlogging and easy sit-down videos like this. The Nikon Z30 does have a flat profile, However, I recommend using the in-camera colors for the most part, and they look pretty great. The Nikon Z30 also shoots full HD at 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second for slow motion. And let's be honest, slow motion looks awesome. Now, I know the Nikon Z30 is not as powerful as something like the Canon R7, but it's a lot cheaper, and the body is a lot more portable, making it better for vlogging. Plus, it has a flip-out screen so you can see yourself, and the menu and bun layout is very straightforward and simple. 
But one huge advantage that the Nikon Z30 actually has over the Canon R7 is that there's a wider variety of lenses available for the Z30. Plus, the kit lens that the Z30 comes with is probably the best kit lens I have ever used. It's very sharp and it also has vibration reduction built right into the lens. The Z30 is the perfect vlogging and on-the-go camera. But for my serious YouTubers who want to make high-end content and YouTube bangers, I recommend the Sony FX30. It's built with cinematic filmmakers and serious video shooters in mind, but it does have one teeny tiny issues that YouTubers specifically should be aware of. The first thing you notice about the FX30 is that it has a cinema style body with mounting points for accessories and handles right on the camera but you can also attach an audio handle that has XLR input for high-end audio mics, and it gives you time code. So if you're someone that's also shooting multiple days on your YouTube video, or you're doing documentary work, your editor will thank you by having time code and XLR audio for perfect audio. Because if there's one thing that I've learned doing YouTube is that your audio is just as important as what's on the screen. Inside the FX30, you'll find a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor which gives you 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second, and yes, it is downsampled or oversampled from 6K. It's pretty much going to give you the quality of 6K, but in an easy to manage 4K file size. And it also has S-Log and S-Gamut for color grading, but the coolest thing about the FX30 is that it also has the ability to output 4.6K raw using an external recorder, up to 60 frames per second. RAW is going to give you a lot more color information, a lot more dynamic range, and you could easily use this to shoot TV commercials if you wanted to. You can also shoot 4K internally up to 60 frames per second without a crop or reduction in quality. However, it's not downsampled or upsampled, so it's just native 4K. One thing that really surprised me about the FX30 is that it can also shoot 4K at 120 frames per second. This is a pretty rare feature to find in modern cameras, but especially at this price point. The 4K does have a 1.6x crop, so you zoom into your sensor, but it's a nice feature to have, and I kind of just consider it a bonus in this camera. The Sony autofocus is also very fast and very reliable, and the body also has in-body stabilization for smooth handhelds. Now for the big problem with this camera. When it comes to photos, well, it really doesn't do very good photos. It only shoots in single frame mode and only in JPEG with no option for RAW, which pretty much makes this a unusable thumbnail camera because you're not really gonna be able to edit your photos and you're only capturing one photo at a time. It's kind of tragic and it's a flaw in this camera, but if you're a serious video shooter and you really wanna start using a proper cinema camera, the FX30 is the best way to start because it's also the cheapest cinema camera on the market. But the lack of photo features is just unfortunate. And if you feel the same, I actually have a little recommendation for you. The Fuji X-H2S has the same video specs as the FX30, including the ability to output raw video, but it's a 26 megapixel sensor which shoots at 15 frames per second in mechanical and 40 frames per second in electronic shutter mode. The autofocus isn't quite as good as the FX30, but it's pretty close. The only reason it's not officially on this list is because when you look at the price, it comes pretty close to a hybrid full frame camera, which I do think is a better value for most YouTubers. And you might be wondering, what is a hybrid full frame camera and why should I get one? The main reason to get a full frame camera is that it has a larger sensor, which means you can capture more light and thus more detail and thus better quality. And the larger sensor also gives you a wider field of view, giving you a more cinematic look to both your photos and videos. And full frame is also the gold standard for most professionals and most Netflix shows and movies are also shot on large format full frame sensors. So if you wanna make art and you wanna make YouTube bangers, let's talk about the Canon R6 Mark II, the best hybrid full frame camera out there for the money today. The R6 has pretty much everything you could possibly want in a YouTube camera without making any sacrifices to quality or cutting any corners. It has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor which produces sharp and crisp video quality. It's 4K that's oversampled from 6K in all modes from 24 to 60 frames per second. So in every mode you're getting a rich 6K video but in an easy to manage 4K file size. Plus it also has C-Log for advanced color grading and it can also output RAW in 6K up to 60 frames per second using an external recorder. 
That right there is a huge game changer. 6K raw up to 60 frames per second in this price point? Wow. And it's still a full frame camera with in-body stabilization and brilliant autofocus in all video modes. It never slows down, not even in slow motion. When it comes to photos, the R6 Mark II does not let you down. It shoots 40 frames per second electronic shutter mode, same as the Canon R7. Now, this might be a little bit overkill for photos, but it's nice to know that I can use this as a YouTube camera, but also a camera to do professional work outside of YouTube or shoot for my social media. When it comes to design, the R6 Mark II is pretty much exactly what you expect from a professional mirrorless camera. Great button layout, simple menus, and it's built like a tank. Though I do wish they would release this camera with a cinema style body similar to the FX3 or FX30. But the Canon R6 Mark II does have one major downside. The lenses for the RF mount that this camera uses are very expensive. They're a thousand percent worth the money, but they're expensive. And currently, Canon doesn't allow for third-party companies to make lenses for their RF cameras. But I do have a fix. Now, there are RF STM lenses that you can also use on this camera that are mainly prime lenses, but there's no good solid zoom options available. The best thing I recommend most people do is use an EF to RF converter to add Canon EF lenses onto the R6 Mark II. You're going to get a wider variety of lenses. You're also going to be able to use third-party lenses for the EF mount, and they're a lot more affordable. What I love about the Canon R6 Mark II is that it perfectly balances photos and videos at an amazing price point without making any sacrifices or cutting any corners. There's no major downsides to this camera as long as you're okay with using EF lenses. And if you have the money, I highly recommend the RF lenses. With that being said, make sure to check out the links in the description down below for the best pricing on all the cameras we talked about today, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.